Hello, I'm Jackie Brokner, and uh, I'm tripping over the mic. Uh, and I'm an artist. I make things I call biosculptures, which are living sculptures that uh, are <clears throat> clean, polluted water. The, uh, this is the first one that was made about 16 years ago. It's called Prima Lingua, which means first tongue or first language. These are really sculpted wetlands. They work like wetlands so that the plants and the microorganisms that live in the plant roots actually transform pollutants into food. So it's turning waste and toxins into food. And that's the, the basic principle of these. They're also intended to um, have metaphors and images uh, and concepts that can help create the public will to um, get people to want to do all the work that everybody's been talking about here. This is um, a different system. What I've had to do is adapt this concept to, to each of the different kinds of ecologies I work in. This is in San Jose, California at a new LEED a Gold Community Center, and it's dry nine months a year there. The landscape architect said, well, we can keep it blue. And I said, why would we want to do that? This is what is here. So I designed a rock filtration system, two of them actually, that collect the storm water from the roof on both sides of the building. Is this too, too loud? It sounds really loud up here. Uh, so this is the, on one side of the building, Coyote Creek filter. It's, um, Coyote Creek is a, a large water system that's right near here. And the map of the Coyote Creek watershed is etched into the glass which is where the filtration is happening, the rocks behind the amber glass, and continues over into the stainless steel. So like all watersheds, it connects things that are separate and different. Watersheds are very abstract ideas, and someone earlier was talking about how your, you know, the litter you throw on the street is connected to the river, or how your kitchen sink is connected to the ocean. In fact, any time we touch water, we're touching the rivers and oceans. So hopefully, kinesthetically, people, you know, through their bodies, people will kind of unconsciously get, get the idea something can uh, connect things that are separate and different. So the water, uh, you can see the scupper above the amber glass, the water goes into the rocks and then the rocks, uh, the filtration continues in, in the long planter before the water goes back to the system making its way to Coyote Creek. This is it at night and, and you can see the, the dendritic patterns that comes from the word for tree, the branches. And hopefully people will notice that that looks familiar. It's like our veins. It's like the, the lines on our hands. It's like our nervous systems. We are part of these larger natural patterns. This is on the other side of the building. It's called the thumbprint filter. And it's literally based on my thumbprint. These um, chutes uh, on the right capture the water from the scupper and drop it down 10 feet onto the stainless steel sculpture, which again has two feet of filtration rock below it that is filtering the rocks, uh, filtering the water before it goes into this swale. And there's a seating wall around that as well, so it provides a little seating for the, this is, this is the chutes from underneath, you look up, you see that. Uh, this is entirely uh, fed by rainwater. This is another view of it. I guess the video is not gonna work. Too bad, okay. Uh, that was a video that shows you it in action. But this is it at night. I wanted it to look like a galaxy, but it's really hard to uh, light something like a galaxy on a low budget. In fact, it's probably impossible on any budget. But the idea is that um, there's a connection. The spiral patterns of water, the spiral patterns of air, the spiral patterns on our fingertips um, show us what our true identity is. The FBI knows that our, our fingerprints show who we really are, and indeed they do. The other project is very different. It's a very wet project. This is in Salo, Finland, and I uh, was asked to um, come there to make a proposal. There are these lagoons that used to be part of the sewage treatment plant. Since they are no longer used, it's become a, a certified European Union conservation site because so many migrating birds come through there and nest there. So when I was speaking to the local ecologists, because I always collaborate with um, planners and architects and landscape architects and hydrologists and you know all kinds of people to get as much input as I can, as well as with people who live near these projects. And, and um, I'll show you that in a minute. But anyway, I proposed 
three floating islands. The largest island would have nesting sites for the birds. The smaller islands would have plants to clean the water and the sediment because its, it's legacy as, uh, from the sewage treatment plant means there are heavy metals and other things in the water. And then the misting system is really an attraction to let people know this is a human-made thing and that we humans actually can do good things for other species and for our natural systems. In five years, people think these are natural islands, so I wanted to make sure we remember that we actually can do good things. Um, as I said, I like to involve as many people as possible, and a big part of my work now is really focusing on how to encourage creative agency among people, because we live in a very malleable culture where we're basically PR'd to death, you know, PR'd into buying and voting, and, and I think we all need to learn that if we work together, we really can uh, create some resistance to some of these systems that are, are uh, overpowering us and not doing such a great job at how they're running the world. So here, uh, I worked with 15 or 17 high school students from a local vocational high school. They helped build the islands, make the uh, artificial rocks we needed because the birds needed rocks to roost on. They, in the lower right, you see them actually doing the electrical hookup, which I, that was at the point I thought, we're on water and these kids are doing this electricity. Is this a good idea? <laughs> but actually that's the job they're learning, so and they did a very good job, good idea, uh, good job. Unfortunately, I guess this video is not going to work either. I think I forgot to include the file. This is our high-tech um, system of moving the structure into the water, and you see these kids uh, running and pushing the, um, the structure, the, the plastic tubes, into the water. And then here, other uh, volunteers, not students, uh, but volunteers from the community, helped lay the different substrates for the plants and put the materials out. It worked. Build it and they will come. The first year we had about 250 birds and 60 babies. And um, there are some of the babies, the brown birds in the middle. And way over on the right, you can see little tiny ones. And they helped patine the rocks too, which I knew they were going to do. Very good. Um, and the second year, uh, this past summer, we had, or spring, we had um, 350 birds and about 70 babies. So it's, it's great for the first two seasons. Uh, part, a, long, a part of the project is long-term water quality monitoring. We're, we got two grants from a science foundation in Finland that's never granted anything but pure science. And what they're very interested in this as a possible way to um, deal with, some, they have lots and lots of water bodies that are polluted. This also gets a lot of uh, runoff from farms around it. So it's an ongo ongoing system of, of pollutants coming in. Um, so we're going to, the long-term water quality monitoring is part of it. All the plants were bought, um, gathered by volunteers from just around this lagoon. And it exceeded my imagination. I didn't imagine that they would be just so very beautiful. And this is uh, it from a boat nearby with the mister. And this is the most recent picture I got of it last fall. Thank you. Oh, also, if you're interested in these projects, uh, there's a book um, about my work called Urban Rain, which you can get on Amazon, or you can look at my website, which is JackieBrookner.com. Thank you.